All right, welcome to the next video of the module. Last video, first off, we just kind of discovered some terms and not terminology and some basic, basic blah, 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 blah. And we're going to take that blah, 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 and then we're going to start putting it to actual shapes on what, how that works. And on top of that, we're going to do some application problems. Um, so first off, I want to talk about is my pet peeve of a problem and it's what we call perimeter. All right, so I'm gonna give you the official definition. Perimeter, get my handy dandy note here, I had to write down, is simply this. This is the definition we'll use. It is the distance around, oops, around the outside of an object. Okay? This is the basic definition, distance around the outside of an object. All right, so I have a example one. All right, so I have a square here. We're gonna say this is three inches, three inches, three inches, and three inches. When I say distance around the outside, I'm talking about all of this together. So let me simplify this and because I'm getting ready to get mad here because perimeter is the easiest question you should have this semester. Out of all the questions you get from day one to the very last day of class, you should get perimeter right for one simple reason. All you have to do is add a sense. You don't know how mad that makes me when someone misses perimeter. Add so I add all the sides. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 gives me 12 inches. I have added all the sides. Example 2, I have a triangle. How many sides does a triangle have? It has 3. 3 sides. So we have 5.5 inches. We'll call this one 4 inches and we'll say that this is 3 inches. Now we add all sides again. Alright, so 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 and a half gives us, uh, use a different color, 12.5 inches. Now, again, was that hard? No, it wasn't because I added all the sides. So let's do one more here. I'm going to draw this shape. Okay, I'm sorry it's not exactly perfect, but it's good enough. We'll say that this is 10 and we're going to say that this is 6 inches. Alright, so, uh-oh, wait a minute, I only gave you two sides. And that seems to confuse a lot of people. And most people write the answer as 16 inches because they added 10 plus 16. Well, that makes no sense. Do you know why it doesn't make no sense? Because you didn't add all sides. How many sides are in this shape? I have one, two, three, four. There's four sides. You only added two, so this answer is wrong. So how, what do we do? Well, if this side is 10 and this side looks like that one, well, that also means that this is 10. And if this is six, that means that this side is six. So now I can add all my sides. 10 plus six is 16. Add the, this 10 plus six is 16 add those two together we get this is a total of 32 inches this is my correct answer and as you can see this is my pet peeve please get this right add all sides don't mess that up all right now i'm done with perimeter that's my lesson on perimeter add all sides um so let's talk about quadrilaterals uh quadrilateral is basically this it is a four sided shape. All right, it has not one, not two, not three, but four sides. That's simple. All right, so, and there's two different types of quadrilaterals that we're going to discuss. First off is what we call a parallelogram. It's really a four-sided shape where both opposite sides are parallel. All right. Parallel. Alright, so if I let's do my first example. I'm gonna draw a basic parallelogram. Okay? Really simple, nothing hard. Hopefully you can see that okay. And this is a four-sided shape. Now I'm gonna use something that we use in geometry 
to denote things that are parallel. Notice that the top side and the bottom side, they are parallel with one another. They're going in the same direction and they'll never touch. And the left side and the right side are parallel. So these two are parallel with one another. All right. So the top and the bottom are parallel and the left and the right are parallel because they're opposite sides. Uh, let's do something, uh, do another one. I'll draw it a little bit bigger this time. All right, so what type of shape is this? Well, you should know that this is a square, all right? And opposite sides are parallel. The top and the bottom are parallel, and the left and the right are parallel. I did that backwards. This is right and left. All right, so this is a square. Now, notice what just happened. I drew a square. This means that a square is actually a type of parallelogram, all right? So if a square is a type of parallelogram, you should be able to figure out the other type of parallelogram because we've all been in kindergarten, and that's a rectangle. The top and the bottom are parallel, and the left and the right sides are parallel. Okay, So this is a rectangle. Now all three of these, this one right here we simply call a parallelogram. That's what we just basically call this. This one is a square, but it's also known as a parallelogram. A rectangle is also a parallelogram. So basically if we wanted to say this, a square is a special type of parallelogram and a rectangle is a special type of parallelogram. Alright, so let's talk about the next set. We have what we call a trapezoid. A trapezoid is this. A four-sided shape where one of the, or let me say one pair, that's a better way of saying it, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. I, make sure, I think I'm spelling parallel right. I'm not, I'm not very good at spelling. All right, so what am I talking about? All right, so this that I'm drawing is a, let's draw it a little bit bigger, is a very simple parallelogram. Not parallelogram, but trapezoid, sorry. Notice that the top and the bottom, the top of it and the bottom of it, they are parallel with one another. However, the left and the right sides, they are not. So this is a four-sided shape, one, two, three, four, where only one pair of opposites are parallel. All right, so here's another example. All right, let's finish this out just a little bit more. All right, this second one doesn't even look like the first one at all, but it still remains true. The top and the bottom, there are my opposite sides, they're parallel, but the left and the right, they're not. Let's do one more. Okay. My opposite sides happen to be my left and my right are parallel, but the top and the bottom of this particular case are not. All right, so the biggest thing that you need to understand from this one is a trapezoid can look like any number of different things, but the big rule of thumb is that there's one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. The other pair of opposite sides are not. It's a rule of thumb that you always need to remember. This is especially useful when we start talking about how to find area. So just be careful on that. Uh, and we'll talk about it again. All right, so speaking of area, let's go on to our next page of notes. All right, so, there uh, we go. So area is kind of defined like this. Here's the mathematical way. It's the, the number of square units that covers a shape. All right, that's the official version. So let me explain this one a little bit area, a little bit better. If I have a shape, and I'm just gonna use this for example, I have a square shape. 
the area is basically the space right here. It's this whole space that I'm covering in. That's kind of what I want you to realize what it's about. Another good way of looking at it is you have a room and you put a carpet in there where the carpet covers the entire floor. That carpet represents your area. So this is the official way of saying it, but if you can just get the concept that the area is basically covering the space of the shape. All right, so the first one that we want to talk about in finding area is a parallelogram. And the one equation that we will, this is what we will use, area, capital A, is equal to B times H. Well, B represents what we call the base, and the H represents what we call height. Now, you may remember from grade school the area is length times width, or uh, length times height, or width times height. Well, all of those um, equations that you may have been taught about area in grade school, they're correct, but this is a better equation because this equation is what all those other ones that you were taught back in grade school are based upon. All right, so let's just do a couple of them real fast and it's not that hard. I'm going to give you a basic shape here. We have a square again. We'll keep it real easy. I need to know the area. Well, the area is base times height. Well, basically, you know what you're going to do. You're going to multiply your two sides. This should be pretty easy. You may say, hey, it's length time width, Mr. Lewis, and that's fine. So we can say 3 times 3 is 9, okay, because we're multiplying, all right? And now this is the tricky part that a lot of people mess up on. A lot of people just put inches as my answer. That's not correct. The correct is inches square. Look at the definition that we have. It says square units. All right, and that's what this is. Our units is square inches. So we need to make sure that when we put area, we always say nine inches square or nine feet square, etc., etc. All right, so let's just kind of do another one. This is another type of parallelogram. And I have uh, five feet this time, and we'll say that this is 10 feet. I'm just keeping math easy. All right, well, we know what we're going to do. We're basically going to multiply. We're going to say five times 10 gives us 50. And feet times feet, well, that's feet squared. So the area of this shape is 50 feet squared. Now this next one is really tough. And, and I would, I, let me take that back. It's not that it's tough, it's that people uh, do the wrong thing. That's the better statement. Alright, so this is a parallelogram. And I'm going to say that this is 10 foot. And I'm going to say that this is 5 foot. And then notice what I'm doing here. I'm going to put this as four foot. Now, this is not an accurate drawing or anything like that, but that's okay. Uh, it's going to show our point. The most common answer for this problem is people say, oh, because everything else that I've done with parallelograms, I always multiply the, out the sides, this times this, and that gives me my answer. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply this side by this side. And they would give me, in this particular case, they would give me 10 times 5 gives me 50 feet square. But this is wrong. This is wrong, 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 wrong. Our equation says base times height. All right, so all ago, this was our base, which was a 3. The height is 3 inches. Our base on this would be 10. Our height would be on this one. But look at this one. Our base on this would be 10. I agree with that. However, the height of the shape from top of the shape to the bottom of the shape is not five foot. It's only measuring this side. Look at this shape. You see this? This represents the height. It's going from the bottom of the shape to the top of the shape. That's what this, this symbol means. Uh, this is telling you that the height is four. So really our answer for this one is 10 times four or 40 foot. Now, this is one way I like to teach people to remember that this is the height. I'm going to show you this symbol again. It looks like this. Well, what letter of the alphabet does this look like? It looks like the letter H. Hey, what's H mean? Height. So when you see this little symbol on a shape, it's telling you the height of that shape. So in this case, it's 10 times 4. All right, so 
we've just talked about parallelograms. Let's go ahead and do the equation of a trapezoid. Equation of a trapezoid is a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's not hard. You just need to take your time from it. It's base 1 plus base 2 all divided by 2, and all this is in parentheses, times h. Huh? Base 1 plus base 2 divide by 2 times h. Alright, so let's do a couple examples here. Um, here we go. Let's keep the keep things simple here. We'll say this is 4 inches. We're going to call this 8 inches. And I'm going to put this in for the sake of argument. Let's just say this is 4 inches as well. Notice I've only given you three measurements. I've given you this one, the 4, this 4, and this 8. I'm not giving you these two sides because I don't want to confuse you yet. So let's look at, let's look at this shape. Base 1 and base 2, our job is to solve the area. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. Base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times h. And our job is to basically plug in numbers into this equation. So, oops, you're running off the screen. I'll move over here a little bit for you. Sorry about that. Didn't know I was off the screen. All right, so base one and base two, what are those? Well, think back to the very first page of notes. I told you that there's a uh, trapezoid only has one pair of opposite sides. Well, those are the bases. My pair of opposite sides in this case happen to be this four inch and this eight inch. Those are my two bases. So, my base 1, 4. Base 2 can be 8. All of this is divided by 2. All right. Now, does it really matter where the 4 and 8 go? No, it doesn't. You just need to know that my two bases are the sides that are parallel to one another. All right. Now, my height. Well, look at the shape. I told you all ago that this little symbol, the dot, 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 looks like a letter H. Well, this is telling me the height of this shape is four inches. So we put in four. All right. So now we're going to just go ahead and calculate this out. Uh, this is what a lot of people do. I'm going to show you what not to do in your calculator. So we're going to do four plus eight divided by two. A lot of people do this. Four plus eight divided by two. This is wrong. This is following order of operations. This says four plus eight divided by two. Well, what's eight divided by two? That's 4. 4 plus 4 gives you 8. That's not what you need to do. Your first step in order to solve this problem is add the 4 and the 8 together first. Well, 4 plus 8 gives us 12. Now you divide by 2 and you get 6. So this first piece is 6 times 4. Okay, I'll scroll up a little bit. So this first piece is 6 times 4. Well, what are we going to do now? Now we can multiply. And so we get 24. Well, what's our units? Our unit is the inches. And remember that we have to be in inches square because this is area. So inches square. All right, so let's try another one. We have another trapezoid here. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We need to find our two bases, and we need to find her height. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to write the equation out, but I am going to plug in the number. So area is equal to, well, first thing, what are my two bases? Base 1 and base 2, they are parallel. So in this particular case, my two parallel sides are 2 foot and 6 foot. So I'm going to say 2 plus 6, all divided by 2. All right, close that in. And my height. Wait a minute, Mr. Lewis, I don't have the little dot, dot, dot in that thing that looks like an H. Yes, you do. This time, you just don't have a dot, dot, dot. See this symbol right here? Technically, this means 90 degrees, but because this symbol is right here, it's telling you that the height of this shape is from the top to the bottom is 5 foot. So my height is 5. So now let's work it out area equals. Remember, when you go to plug this in your calculator, you add the 2 and the 6 first. 2 plus 6 gives you 8. Then you divide by 2 and it gives you 4. So 4 times 5 
gives you 20. What unit was I in? Well, this was feet, so I'm going to put feet here. And because I'm doing area, it's going to be feet square. All right, so let's try one more. All right, so in this problem, I'm giving you a bunch of information here. All right, so, but the problem remains the same. I have my trapezoid, a four-sided shape. I know this is 10, this is 15, and these two are sixes. But I also have some information out here to the side. So let's go through it again. Same equation. Area is equal to base one plus base two. What are my two bases? They are the sides that are parallel. This side, the top and the bottom are parallel, so it's going to be 10 plus 15 divided by 2. Now I need to know the height. A lot of instinct, uh, your instinct might be say, hey, this 6 or this 6. No, don't do that. You need to look at the height. Well, this time I don't have the height actually drawn in the shape. I have it on the outside. Notice how I've got a line going to the bottom here, a line going to the top of the shape here, and then I have my little H symbol, even though this is backwards, over here. That's telling me that the height of this shape from top to bottom is actually 4. So now you solve it like you normally do. Uh, 10 plus 5 is, excuse me, 10 plus 15 is 25. Divide by 2, that gives you 12.5. All right? Multiply that by 4, so 12.5 times 4 is going to give you 50. And we can double check our math real quick using our handy dandy calculator because I did that in my head. I'll put it over here to the side so we can see it. I have 10 plus 15 equals 25. Now divide by 2. Now multiply by 4 and I get 50. Well, what unit was I in? I was in meters. And since this is area, it's meters square. Now, the biggest thing I need you to remember, that area is always written as units, mm, can't spell, units square. All right? So whatever the unit is, it could be feet square. It could be meters square, inches square, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So always remember that. All right, now that's the easy stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. Now it's going to start getting a little bit more complicated. All right, because we're getting into application now. All right, so let's read this problem. It says, how many stones will it take to build a wall shown if the stone measures? Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to save this one for last. Tell you what, let's, let's save one for last because this one's actually a tough one and I want you to really see this. So, uh, we're going to come back to it. Let's just go right straight to two. This problem states a roll of gasket material is 18 inches wide. What length is needed to obtain 22 square foot of the material? Careful, the number is not expressed in compatible units. Alright, so first off, let's cut back to me. I want you to see something. Uh, gasket material, if you don't know what that is, it's okay. The best way I know how to explain it is if you've ever looked in a water hose, there's a plastic ring that goes into the female end of the water hose so that when it connects to the male end of a faucet, that the water doesn't leak out. It's a plastic ring. Well, that plastic ring is what we call a gasket. All right, and the way that gasket is made from, it's made from uh, a, basically a giant sheet of plastic and they punch holes in it to make that shape. Uh, so the way this works, uh, this problem is saying a roll of gasket material, think of it like this, let's change the problem slightly. It's a roll of paper towels. Okay, this is something you do understand. It's a roll of paper towels that's 18 inches wide. Hey, this is about 18 inches wide. Um, actually, it's probably a little bit longer. Uh, no, no, not longer, but shorter. It's about uh, a little over 12. All right. Um, anyway, so this is about 18 inches wide. We're just going to imagine that it is. And we need to make... What hap well, think about it. What happens when you unroll it? It makes giant rectangle. I can keep pulling this, but I need to use it because, hey, I'm poor. I can't use it so much. So it just keeps pull pulling out, pulling out, and I'm like, oh, man, dropped it in the trash can. It makes a giant rectangle, okay? Well, here's the thing. I know that this one side from here to here 
is 18 inches and according to my problem the giant rectangle that I have created is 22 square foot the problem is asking me is how much or how long did I pull it out all right so how long is it? That's what this problem is showing you. I wanted you to see this visual aid here because a lot of people struggle with this problem because they can't see it. That's what's happening. I've taken a giant paper towel roll and I've unrolled it and I need to know how long it is. All right, so let's go back to the dot cam and start showing you this on paper. All right, so this is what we have. We're going to, I'm going to just kind of draw this out. We have this giant paper towel roll that has been unrolled and we have made this long rectangle. And this is what we know. I know that this side is 18 inches. What I'm trying to find out is how long this side is because I know that the area on the inside is 22 square feet. Well, remember two things. First off, how do we find area? Area is equal to base times height. All right, so that's one thing we need to remember. The other thing that we need to understand is that this is in inches and this is in square feet. So what we've got to do is convert this into feet. So how do we do that? Well, go back to conversions all the way back in Module 1. These things are not going to leave you. Just because you got it done in Module 1 does not mean you're not going to use it again. All right, so 18 inches. When we convert it, um, we can do it. Let's just, let's just go ahead and do it the, the way I taught you. I know that 18 inches where I start at, and I put a 1 under it right now. I'm going to multiply it by one conversion factor. What are my conversion factors? Well, I know that 12 inches are equal to one foot. I work this all the way out. I'm going to say 18 times one is 18. Divide that by 12, and what do I get? I get one and a half. So this side is actually 1.5 feet. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this over here, 1.5 foot. Now I've got something I can work with. I know that this is 1.5 foot. I'm trying to find X, and I know that my actual area is 22. So how does this help me? Well, let's plug these numbers in. What do I know? I know my area is 22. I know my base is unknown, so I'm going to leave it as B just because I want to. And I know that my height of this thing is 1.5. So I can say B times 1.5. Rewrite this to something a little bit easier to see. I can say 22 is equal to 1.5 times B. This should look very familiar to you and what you should do now. All you have to simply do is divide by 1.5 on both sides. The 1.5s cancel out, so now we just go 22 divided by 1.5 and I get 14.6 uh, and notice how it says in my calculator infinity, so it's like 0.66 infinity, okay? Um, is equal to my B. For the sake of argument, let's just round this to the nearest tenth. And we're going to say that this is going to be 14.7 what unit am I in? Feet. Now, the, a lot of people are going to say, hey, because this is area, it, this should be feet square. No, this is not feet square. Why? This is a length. I only need feet because it's a length. The only time that I need foot square is when I'm calculating area. Since I already had the area and I was working backwards, I was just calculating for feet right now. All right, so the other thing I want you to be aware of is just because we've got this answer, I can tell you to round it to whatever I want to. I can ask you to round it to the nearest hole. If I do, that might be 15. If I ask you to round it to the nearest uh, hundredths, it's going to be 14.67. So be careful about your rounding. Do your math problem, you get your, you get your final answer, and then whatever the instructions tell you, that's where I want you to round. All right? So let's go to question number three. Get it lined up just right. There we go. All right, question three. 
Fertilizer must be applied to the planted area shown below. Excuse me, shown in the figure. If each bag covers 400 square foot, how many bags are needed? All right, so the first thing that we need to understand is this. We have a shape here, and it's a trapezoid. We know it's a trapezoid because these two opposite sides are parallel. All right, so we know that. And we're going to be buying some bags of fertilizer to go inside the shape. And one bag is only good for 400 square feet. So the problem that we're going to end up coming is this is in square feet while these dimensions are yards. So the first thing that I want to do is find out how much area do I actually have to work with here. So because this is a trapezoid, we're going to be using this equation. A is equal to base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times H. All right. So we plug in our numbers. What are my two bases? Well, my two bases are the sides that are parallel. Well, 16 and 36, these two are parallel with one another. So I'm going to say 16 plus 36 divided by 2. Well, what's my height? Well, here's my little symbol that I've been talking about. So my height has to be 14. Now, let's work this all the way out using our calculator. Remember, we do 16 plus 36. We do that first. Then we divide by 2, and we get 26. Now we can multiply that by 14, and we get 364. Now, what unit was this shape in? It's in yards, but because I was finding area, it was yard square. Now, let's look at the next part of the problem. It tells me that I need to take a bag and cover 400 square foot. Well, here's the problem. This is in square yards. This is in square foot. So guess what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to convert something. So which one do we want to convert? Do we want to convert this from square yards to square feet? Or do we want to convert this from square feet to square yards? The truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter which one you decide to convert. Just choose one, and only one, and that's it. So, because I've already got it all nicely written right here, and I'm going to convert my square yards, and I'm going to convert that into square feet. So, I've got to go back to Module 1, and I have to look at Module 1's formula sheet, and I have to find my conversion factor that will get me from square yards to square feet. And this is what I found out, that one square yard is equal to nine square feet. Okay, so that's my conversion factor. So let's go back to this number here. I am going to convert it. I have, starting with 364 square yards, and I'm going to put a one under it right now because I've told you multiple times. How many conversion factors am I multiplying by? I am multiplying by one conversion factor, which is this guy right here, what we found. Now, we're going to plug in stuff. Because I'm trying to get rid of square yards, square yards is going to go on the bottom, and square feet are going to go on top. I'm going to put these numbers in. One here, and I'm going to put nine here. My square yards go away, and so now I can work with it. 364 times 9 gives me 3,276 square foot. So this shape, once we have converted it, uh, we found the area in square yards, then we converted it to square feet, gives us 3,276 feet. But this is not what the problem is asking. It's asking for how many bags of fertilizer can go in this. I know that one bag has 400 square feet. So what I am going to do now is divide, okay, to find out how many bags I'm going to need. So I'm going to divide this number by 400 square foot. So I can use that in my calculator. Divide by 400. When I do, I get this number, 8.19. Well, what's this number represent? It represents how many bags of fertilizer I need. All right, so your instinct to say, hey, I need 8.19 bags. Now, let me ask you a question. If you were going to Lowe's and you tell the person there, say, I need 8.19 bags of fertilizer to get in my truck, what are they going to do? They're going to look at you like you're stupid. 
because there is no way you are going to buy 0.19 of a bag. You're The only way you're going to get 0.19 of a bag is when the person is not looking, you open up a bag and take a handful of it and put it in your pocket and steal it. So what are you really going to buy from Lowe's? You can't buy a partial bag, so you're actually going to have to round up to nine bags. Now, the only reason why we do this is because this is a real life situation. We're needing to know, uh, we need to have the either the exact amount of bags, in this case we can't because it's a fraction, or we're gonna have to have a little bit more than what we need. Nine bags is more than what we need, but that's what we have to do. So a lot of people in this problem want to round down. And when people do, they say, hey, I only need eight bags. But is that true? No, it's not because you need eight bags and a little more because of that fraction. So remember, in this type of problem, you're gonna to have to round everything up. So be very careful on that. Uh, and a lot of times you'll actually have the problem kind of say round up Okay, so just be cautious. All right, so again, the answer for this one, nine bags. All right, uh, next one. All right, this problem states a rule of thumb in printing says that the area of the type page should be half of the paper page. If the paper is five inches by 10 inches, what should the length of the type page be if the width is six inches? All right, huh? What in the world does this mess mean? Okay, so, uh, if you notice, I've been doing some drawings here. This is actually a very good one to draw out. So let's talk about this. I'm going to draw a piece of paper. All right, and it says that the uh, the paper is a five inch by ten inch. So let's draw it out like this. Okay. So we know this is going to be five inches, and we know that this is going to be ten inches. All right. So what do we have? The paper is five by 10. What should the length of the type page be if the width of is six inches? What is this talking about? All right, so here is my paper. What it's saying is on a blank sheet of paper that I've got right here, when I start to write things, whatever I write, yada, 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 et cetera, 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 et cetera should be half the area of the paper. So think this through for just a second. What's the area of my paper in here? So I'm going to put paper. What's the area of it? Well, the area of my paper is basically 10 times 5. Well, that's going to give me 50 inches. All right. What about my writing? Okay. So let's do, or we'll, we'll do it like the paper says, typed. Well, the problem says that the type page should be half the paper page. Well, what's half of 50? Half of 50 is 25. So the area of the type page should be 25 inches. So far, so good? All right, now let's go back to our picture. It tells me that the area of this shape right here where all my little words and everything, well, that's 25 inches square. Whoops, forgot to put the squares there. Say, Mr. Lewis, you're an idiot. Yes, you're, you're exactly right. That should have said inches square. Correct me when I'm wrong. So this type page is 25 inches square. But not only do we know the area of this type part, we also know the width of it is six inches. So what we're trying to find is the length of, excuse me, uh, we're trying to find the other piece, okay, which is X here, all right? So that's what's happening here. We know that the area is 25 inches square. We know the width of it to be six, and we're trying to find the length of it here, the length of it, or in our case, this case, well, I draw it upside down, is the height, all right? So how do we do that? Well, what do we know? We know that area is equal to base times height. My area of my type page is 25. My base, we'll say is six, but we're trying to find the X. So we know that 25 is equal to six X. Well, how do we solve for this? We divide by six. When we do, we will get 25 divided by six gives us X is equal to 4.16 infinity equals X. All right, now, this is what your calculator states. 
Now, at this point in time, I can tell you to round it any way I want to. I'm probably going to say round it to the nearest tenth. In this case, when we round to the nearest tenth, because it's an infinity number, okay, uh, hopefully you can see this, this six is telling that one to go up. All of these numbers become zeros and they get dropped. So my ultimate answer is 4.2. Well, what unit was I working in? I was working in the inches. So for this particular one, I have 4.2 inches equals X. So that's the length of my uh, type page. Um, just be careful again on these problems. Make sure you read the instructions because sometimes they're going to tell you round to the nearest hole, round up, round down, etc., etc. So just be cautious. Once you find your answer, read the instructions and do the rounding as it tells you to do it. All right, so now we're going back to my favorite one. This is number one that we skipped. I started to do it at begin, uh, earlier in the video, but I decided against it because this one's a tough one. All right, so um, how many stones will it take to build the wall if each stone measures three and three quarter inch by seven and three quarter inch, including mortar? Hint, change wall dimensions to inches. So what we're doing in this particular problem is we have we're building a wall and we are putting stones in that wall okay and you know, we'll just kind of make it look somewhat nice and we need to find out how many stones um, it is now I will tell you that the answer to this question I had this actually uh, given to me on a test is not this this was what somebody wrote a lot of um, then they had some um, a, a nice little cuss word there um, this was uh, one of the answers that I got a lot of blankety blank stones um, yes this may be true but this is not the answer I'm looking for uh, so it, the answer to this question is not a lot of blankety blank stones just letting you know alright so this one tells you change the wall dimensions to inches. So I'm going to actually kind of help you along with this one and we're going to do it step by step. To solve this problem, we're going to do a couple steps. First, we're going to do what the hint says. Change wall dimensions. I'm going to put D, wall dimensions to inches. Okay, we're going to do that first. The second step that we're going to do is find area of wall. Next step, find area of stone. Last step, four, divide the area of the wall, the area of the wall by the area of the stone. All right, now this is only one way of solving this problem, okay? There's actually multiple ways of solving it, but this is the one I like to use the most. First, change the wall dimensions to inches. Two, find the area of the wall. Three, find the area of the stone. And four, divide the area of the wall by the stone. So, let's set this up. Uh, let's look at up here. It's telling me to change the wall dimensions to inches. Well, first off, this says 31 feet. How many inches are always in a foot? 12. So what we're going to do is say 31 times 12, we're converting, and we find out that this has 372 inches. Now let's do this one. It's 6 foot 3 inches. Well, there's, six, there's 12 inches to a foot, so 6 times 12 gives me 72, but I also have that additional 3 inches right here, so I'm going to add 3 that means that this right here is 75 inches. So I have done my first step. I have taken it to, let me write this as an end. Uh, we have changed it all into inches. All right, so step two, find the area of the wall. So my area of my wall is going to be equal to my base times my height, right? Well, what's that? It means that I'm gonna say 372 times 75. And when I do this in my calculator, I get 372 times 75, and I get this number, 27900. What unit am I working in? Inches square. All right? So we just did step two. Step three, it says find area of the stone. Well, the area of the stone 
again is my base times height. What am I doing? I am going to say three and three quarters times seven and three quarters. Now, Mr. Lewis, this is a fraction. How do I put a fraction into the calculator? All right, stop and remember back in our very first module, we can change three quarters into a decimal. I've told you uh, in class that three quarters should be one of those fractions to decimals you should know like that. You should know that 3 quarters is 0.75. So this is really saying 3.75 times 7.75. Now, we can put that in our calculator holder a lot easier. 3.75 times 7.75, and that gives me uh, 29.06, oops, that says 06. Now, a lot of people want to take this and round this number. Do not round. I'm begging you. Never round until the last step. The last part of your question is when you round. So do not round right now. So this is also in inches square. All right. So I found the area of the stone. What do I do now? It says divide the area of the wall by the area of the stone. So I'm going to say, I'm going to write it down here. 27900 zero, zero, and I am going to divide it by, uh, I'm off the screen, sorry about that, um, 27,900 divided by 29.0625. So, I'm going to show you a little neat trick in your calculator. I'm going to put 27900 zero, zero in the calculator, but it kind of gets to be a pain to put in this 29.0625. That's not that big of a deal, but what if I want to be lazy and not use that? Check this out. Hit the divide button, and now in this particular calculator on the TI-84, you have a second button. If you press it, and then down at the bottom, right below the three, right here, there's a little thing that says ANS, it's in blue. When you press this button, your calculator says 27,900 divided by ANS. What does that mean? It's actually doing this right here. It's saying 27,900 divided by 29.0625 because it's dividing by the last answer that you had in your calculator. This only works on your TI-83s, your TI-84s, and if you have a TI-30X, you have the same, even though it doesn't look like my calculator, it has the same process. Uh, you have the second and then that ANS key. So this is a good button to know. So now that I've done that, I simply hit enter, and it tells me that I have 960. Well, what does that mean? It means that I need 960 stones to build this wall. So yes, it is a lot of blah, blah, blah stones, but to be more precise, it's 960 stones. All right, so that is this video. I'm done with that. Hopefully it wasn't too terribly long. I uh, did it as short as I possibly could. Uh, you know how to find me. There are some uh, speaking of finding me, there are some application problems that are in your homework that I did not discuss in this video. Please try them on your own, and if you have struggling with them, send them my way, and I will help you to the best of my ability. All right, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.